Hi guys! Hello! Yes! I at last watched Avengers. <laughs> anyway, this day, Hunger and 2, 102. So, yep. Uh, I just came back actually, so that's why my hair is still. And it's very late, I know, 3 11 plus. I went to see Avengers at. Uh, and this song is from the Avengers, of course. Uh, I'm not sure if this is from the Avengers Endgame, but I just searched online uh, in Spotify and they have this song. So, yeah, I just came back from Malaysia. Uh, because this morning, in fact this afternoon, uh, I went to watch, just to go to Malaysia to watch Avengers because because uh, Malaysia has the 4DX version of Avengers. So you can't get 4DX in Singapore unfortunately. If they have, I would have gone so. So yes, there's a 4DX version in Malaysia. But, and yes, this song is from Avengers. So I just watched it. I went there just to watch it and came back. I didn't even eat anything there. My friend is eating fast food there. I brought my own bags of nuts and my own tea, unsweetened tea, flavored tea, and I went there. And that's all I did, you know, just to go and watch. I didn't buy anything. Definitely didn't eat any food there. And came back. Now, is it worth it? Okay, it's not gonna be a spoiler, okay guys. Hi guys. Hello, Kumbawa, Anihaseo, Wan San Hao. I know it's very late now. I literally just came back from Malaysia. Went in the afternoon. I should have gone in the morning. So is it worth it going to Malaysia to watch movies? It's not like I don't want to support local but because they have 4DX and I've watched 4DX before and you know all the movement so it's like a theme park kind of thing going on you know it's more fun so yeah that set music is from the Avengers so I'm not sure if you will my copyright strike or not and remove <coughs> the audio anyways I went to Malaysia to watch it is it worth it? okay it's not gonna be a spoiler but let me start from the beginning I sometimes go to Malaysia to watch because they have 4DX, okay? Singapore don't have 4DX Which means you can actually watch and then it's like a It's almost like a theme park, you know? Because the 4D is that the whole chair will move There will be air blowing, there might be water sprinkling So there's this added realism, so to speak When you're watching a movie So to me it's worth it And it's like, even if you convert to Sing Dollars Plus The Grab Transport to go there and come back From City Square and the time spent and you are going there to buy other things and eat as well it's definitely worth it that's how I feel okay not like I don't want to support Singapore but it's worth the money to go there because I stay very near actually a few bus stop away from Malaysia so anyway the point being uh, so I went there this afternoon unfortunately uh, I didn't take into account that okay I went a bit late so people who have finished working in the afternoon going back to Malaysia yes massive jam but the gem is not in the Malaysia side, Malaysian queue, it's in the Singapore queue. Okay, never mind. Very likely, this is the week before Mother's Day, right? Next week is Mother's Day. So there are people who go there, you know, go to Malaysia to shop or maybe to meet someone or whatever for Mother's Day possibly. So the queue is epically long. Uh, I think it's the second time since the last five years or eight years that I went to Malaysia that I have to stand in the queue for at least three plus hours. 3 plus freaking hours! So, although I slim down, my back still have that problem. So it's achy to my back. I'm like, ah, oh, trying to, I didn't sit down, but I have to shift around my weight and stuff like that because my back is like standing for 3 plus hours is a killer for my back, seriously. And so, and the worst is this why it became 3 plus hours? My heel, and it's not uncommon, okay, because I have encountered this a few times before was one of those that you can't tell from afar until you reach and start merging so it was apparently three lines merging into one line, one queue so it's like ah, so frustrating but no point frustrated it's happened before, it's not going to stop any time as long as you don't put barricade people is going to just queue and then things are going to get messy and then and there's a lot of shouting, yeah there's a lot of shouting, some auntie was shouting, some guy was shouting in the back so, and this this Caucasian couple, which is more senior, I think they are in their fifties, I think, fifties, sixties, were in front of me. So they are talking to other locals, asking about this this situation. Why is it merging the queue? So fine, I understand it's going to merge. I just listen to my music. When it's my turn, I kind of like you know, you just alternate, so you stagger left, right, left, right. So the guy behind me will tap me on my shoulder and says, "Are you going to like stand in front? Why are you like separating from the queue that you are in?" So I just telling him because it's merging. So you just got to go left, right, left, right. And some of these Caucasian couple, you know, he's more senior, so I leave that, let them go first. And then my turn, and then maybe the other guy behind me on the left. <coughs> so after 
he finished the immigration, I mean the custom, he left. The guy, for some reason, okay, I won't say for some reason, uh, I think he also queued just as long, and for a senior, I think it would be quite tiring for them, even worse. So he turned around and shouted to the crowd, you know, and go, woohoo, yeah! Like, he just cheered. And then everyone was like, woo, like, I just like, what the hell? He turned around to be sarcastic and said, yay, yeah, yeah, I finished the, the queue, up, and then he left. I think, of course, being Caucasian, I, I'm pretty sure it's not local, lah, okay? Um, he probably did it out of like, yay, yeah, happy, like he, he succeeded. But I think <laughs> the jaded locals will be like, look at him and say, why is this Caucasian doing this, you know? I almost thought that the other officers, right, at the custom will look at him and say, hey, what are you doing? Like, are you trying to make a, create some kind of riot or whatever? So shouting really loud. I was like, wow, shocked man, because it was my turn at the custom. So he, was, he turned around after he left and he was like shouting to the crowd all the way at the back. Like, yeah, like he finished the, the queue. So anyway, I just take it like, ah, it's just some silly old man. Anyway, so the point being, I took three plus hours queuing at the week before Mother's Day. So at the time after noon, I should go in the morning. So the queue is epic, yeah. So anyway, Lucky keep coming back, the queue is not that long, probably 20 minutes long, and I clear it. So Saturday night is fine, it seems, coming back. I mean, it's nothing new, you know, if you go Malaysia, offer enough, you know. So yeah, today I do a noob. <laughs> I was uh, a bit noob in that sense, you know, I went at a not opportune time. Okay, let's talk about Avengers. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to do a spoiler, I'm going to watch the Avengers. I'm not a diehard fan, because I don't really read the comics. But I guess it translates quite well on screen and to me it's exciting, it's interesting. A little bit spoiler is that the end is a bit it, to me it's sad, okay? But there's a reason for it, you know, because what comes, you know, one full cycle, that's all I can say. I don't make it a spoiler because then people can't watch, continue watching me maybe. But I just say it comes full one full cycle uh, in the Marvel comic universe uh, franchise of Marvel you know, movies. So it's quite cool. So is it worth going to watch? Well, if I have gotten my 4DX movie, which I couldn't, I tried to go online, couldn't go through. Uh, so I couldn't see the seats. When I was there, I saw the seats. It's all fully booked. So uh, even the front seat, seriously, even the front seat is fully booked. And I'm going with a friend, so I don't want to like separate. It's like a bit awkward as well. So. Oh well, in the end, we just watch the normal version, not even the 3D version because even 3D version is still fully booked in Paradigm Okay, so everywhere within these few weeks is fully booked Who knows, maybe when it dies down, I might go and watch again but anyway, I'm not crazy fanatic uh, but it is, yeah, interesting and the end sequence of the fight, everything is, is fantastic Okay, I won't say anything more after that it's like, it would be a spoiler but oh, at the end, there is a after the credit, I read online like, yeah, you actually don't need to stay through the credit. It's just that at the end of the credit, you see the Marvel logo, and you hear the sound of like, hammering. And online they're saying that that's the sound of when Iron Man started, when he was building the Iron Man suit. So it's like, a homage, a homage to his beginning. So, yeah, that's all I can say. So if you don't want to stay in the credit after the end of the movie, you'll see uh, uh, they'll be showcasing the cast and the name and the last person obviously, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. You'll see his signature and that's it, everything just text. You can leave really, there's nothing to stay. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping to stay because like maybe maybe the end logo might show something, you know, but nothing. Nothing at all. Uh I, I actually thought that maybe they might resurrect, you know, um, what's his name? Oh shit, I forgot! Stan Lee, yeah, Stan Lee. Like, I thought that they might use CGI and resurrect Stan Lee who has passed away not too long ago. And because this is like his baby, you know, this comic, this Marvel Universe. So, uh, I know there's a lot of political things happening, I'm not sure about like some things happening in the back. Anyway, so I thought maybe he might appear as a CGI or something, or maybe they just replay his part in one of the scenes. Oh, I did see Ken Jong, right? Ken Jong inside, it's like, eh? Ken Jong is one of the characters, but it's just a sideline, like, he only appeared for a few seconds, and that's it. But you can tell it's Ken Jong. Uh, the Asian, uh, 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 the Asian American uh, comic, uh, 
a comedian, sorry, com comedian. So he's like, suddenly appears, like, okay. Did he pay, pay him to appear or he wanted to just appear in, the, in this very definitive, you know, Avengers series, uh, big end game, you see, so it's like a very important one. Anyway, if interesting to see the future Iron Man, maybe? Because apparently there are some characters that appear towards the end you will see uh, And it's like, huh, ah, okay Yeah, it's actually something to do with Tony Stark Yeah, so he appeared apparently in Iron Man 3 before A teenager, a specific teenager Anyway, I can't say more And also there isn't much info, uh, I'm not fanatic uh, So those who are fans who have read the comic probably know much more obviously So, is it worth it? I feel it's worth it, still if you go to Malaysia to eat and, and shop and whatever uh, with your friends or a bunch of friends and you take Grab Going there, I, I went to Paradigm Mall So from City Square to Paradigm Mall is about 18 ringgit Coming back roughly about 16 ringgit So if you share among your friends, maybe each of you are paying only a few dollars Or even less than If you think about it, oh my god Less than a dollar sing actually, you know, if you like 4 friends in a Grab car Yeah so, yeah, it's actually still worth it, you know, to take the grab, to go Paradigm or go to Brow as well. Or the new mall, but I actually wanted to go to the new mall. Because the new mall was open on April 23rd, a few weeks ago. Or was it last week? Uh, it's called... Oh shit, what's it called? Eh? I swear I forgot. It's not letter like S. Star something, is it? It's not Pavilion, uh. my friend said Pavilion, it's not Pavilion. Or something else, I can't remember. Uh, go and check it out. Anyway, it's in the east, you know, it's in the north east side. Yeah, nearer to Kerbrow. Definitely not Paradigm website. So it's further up north, further than KSL City. So there's a new mall. But that mall doesn't have a cinema. So I'm, I didn't go to that new mall to watch anything. Anyway, uh, hello. Komawa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the likes. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Kamsa hamida. Sisye. Tote. Kamsia. Selamat. Kopungkap. Kam en. Nandri. Payabad. I was all very makase. Okay, that's all the Asian language I know. Western will be, you know. Danke shun. Merci buku. Obrigado. Grazi. Muchas gracias. And spicy bow, spicy bow, I think spicy bow, which is Russian for it. Thank you. So again, thanks for the likes, the love, the comment, and encouragement. Hope I in turn encourage you guys to also, you know, uh, stay fit and keep to it. So yeah, even when I was in Malaysia, uh, my friend is eating fast food. You know, I mean, it's up to him. You know, he controls his own health. I'm eating. Actually, I didn't eat. I brought a bag of nuts. Uh, thinking I might eat because actually I ate at home. I cooked already at home before I went there. So I was afraid that I might I might still get hungry. Maybe when I move here, I want to munch, which is always the case. When movies, I will definitely order popcorn or, or potato chips or nachos, all those junk food, and I'll eat it before the start of the movie to finish it, and then I'll just watch. But you know, ever since this, no more, no more such junk food, no more popcorn. So it's just nuts. I brought the walnut, uh, almond nuts, and some raisins. But I didn't eat it actually. <laughs> so I brought it back home again. Uh, I did bring my own tea some more. I didn't drink any water from there. You know, no point buying bottled water when. Yeah, I actually brought my own water. And I'm not supposed to, uh, but <laughs> I brought my own water and I put my tea back inside so it's like flavored tea, zero sugar. So, yeah, you know. So that's what you got to do. You know, for me, it's because, like I said, I need to be regimented in this. I almost said regimented. I have to be um, sticking to this diet, make it a good habit, you know. So, no off days unless, you know, you have a choice, uh, no choice in that sense. Like the other day where I was eating outside because of a certain event, you know, but I still choose the healthier version to eat. If you can control, like in this case, because it's just a casual, you know, uh, going out to watch a movie. So, I don't see the reason why I can't just bring my own food, so to speak, and just avoid outside food altogether. It's just that hopefully they don't chase you out, you know, because they bring your own food to a restaurant or fast food restaurant. I don't know. Technically, they can chase you out because it did say no outside food, okay? So, yeah. You could probably still buy a non sugar water there somehow, maybe the green tea. 
uh, non-sugar green tea or water and just drink with your friends and your friends or family is eating at the restaurant outside so yeah I mean they will understand right the point is like if you're outside you're just spending time with them that's more important than they have to share the same meal right again yes there's some things that you just got to you just got to control you okay? just control your diet anyway so back to movies and all yeah, I'm looking forward actually. In fact, there's a few movies of the Marvel I haven't watched, so that's why I missed out some things. I don't get certain things. Like, I didn't watch Captain Marvel. So, I know there's Captain Marvel, just I didn't watch the, the Captain Marvel movie. So, I don't know what she did, and my friend was saying there's some things going on there, so it's like, that's not relationship. So, okay, okay. So, I shall go ahead and find ways to go and find it, and watch it. And also, I didn't watch the Wasp and Ant-Man. So yeah, I know there's the Wasp as well as the lady version of this, you know, the Ant-Man where yeah, she also shrank into small size. So yeah, it's like a tour de force, you know, the whole Marvel comic characters coming together to fight at the end. So that's like, wow, spectacular, so I like that. Uh, I hope the fight scene was longer actually, seriously, much longer, but <laughs> I don't know, really too much CGI or something. <laughs> Very heavy on the, the movie making budget or something, I don't know. They have probably trillion dollar, billion, yeah, billion dollar movie franchise for sure. Anyway, I wanna say more. It might be spoiler. Go and watch it. Maybe a few weeks time. Now, actually, I did discuss a bit of spoiler in my Facebook post, but it's not much either. Like, really, not even revealing much for the plot. But I just thought some things I don't know because you know I don't I don't read the comic, so probably explain certain things why they can't do this or not that, and make things better so to speak but oh well uh, I just only scratching one thing what happened to Loki after that after that incident and then it's like in the movie I mean so I didn't go read out that it's like hey eh? why suddenly the thing got to the end situation and then the altercation with Loki some part towards the end wasn't shown so I don't quite understand that so I didn't go and find out yeah anyway so yeah, it's quite late, now it's like coming to midnight. I'll try to exercise at least half an hour. Uh, at least half an hour. And I'm quite tired because this whole afternoon I'm working 3 plus hours just to get to Malaysia. Bad timing because I wear like afternoon, I should go in the morning. And then all the seats are booked for my 4DX movie and I can even book online. I tried, seriously, I clicked, it just didn't go through. I don't know, is it like everyone's trying or it's just not working? You know, and the site is not that great, unfortunately. It's not easy to navigate either. Sorry, I need to complain a bit. GS, GSC, okay, GS Cinema. Your website, online website, pretty sucky. Really need to rethink about the back button or how to rechoose the cinema. You don't have to go back so many steps just to change the timing and and and, and choice of yeah, choice of timing. Seriously, then just to book. And then I try to book using PayPal. Did not go through. I guess wondering is it because I'm overseas, uh, it didn't register that I'm using a local number, so I don't know why. Anyway, I could have, yeah, I know, maybe in Singapore I should have tried to, actually I did, I tried to go to their website, couldn't go through also. Anyway, I guess it's not meant to be. Anyway, I'm not a diehard fan. If you are, have a chance, please go and check it out, the 4DX version of uh, Endgame, yeah. I guess yeah, a lot of the fight scenes will be very good, you know, your, your, your seat will be rumbling, moving about and all the visual effects will be, you will feel it, okay, you will feel it because I have watched, I think two movies so far, I can't remember what was it but an action packed movie in 4DX cinemas in uh, Johor Paradigm Mall so yeah, it's worth going to watch and it's still cheaper, seriously, yes, trust me after the currency conversion, it's still cheaper to, eat, to watch there, that's for sure. Like, uh, roughly, the price of one ticket in Singapore, you can watch about two and a half. Two, at least two for sure. Two, two times the movies in Malaysia. So, you know, if you have the time uh, and energy to go across to Malaysia, yeah, you can save some money. And, you know, like I said, like, other things you can do there, like shop like, and stuff. Yes. And apparently this year, Johor is supposed to open up 7. So the one that recent one, the star, star, star something I think, is the recent one that is open. Uh, further above KSL City, uh, north east side of Johor. Uh, and so there will be 6 more others, more that is being going to open in Johor. So it's like, oh my god, so many. There will be one just next to Ikea. 
Apparently, Ikea will be managing that mall as well, so I don't know, let's go and check. Yeah, if you have time, you can check it out. But not all the malls have cinema, okay? And there are some malls who are more targeted at the more higher end market. Like, there's one I saw, it's like a. Uh, it looks like a European city. I think it's like that French villa kind of feel. I'm not sure what is that called. I went there once before, my friend drove me up. In Malaysia, there's this place where it's like up the mountain and it's like a, it looks like a French chateau and villa kind of like like a European street kind of thing. So this new mall, one of them is going to look like that. You know, European street kind of feel. The the, the buildings and yeah, the environment apparently. All right, this song, Ben Briggs, Ghost of Fight. The title of this song. Let's go, let's go. So yes, I ate uh, this afternoon before going to Malaysia. I ate the remaining of what I cooked yesterday. Basically the onions, so it's big lah, big onions, potatoes, carrots, and chicken. I think that's it actually, and some garlic, yes. Uh, and then I put a lot of achar today, which is the fermented veggies. Yes. Uh, something like kimchi lah, if you don't know what's achar, something like kimchi. So there's cabbage or carrots, but it's fermented, it's like pickled. I would say it's pickled, but I'm not sure if it's really fermented, it's just pickled. Yeah, it's just pickled. So anyway, so my acha and my herbal infused eggs inside for lunch. It's not a lot, so when I was slightly afternoon, actually when I came back, I felt a little hungry, but I don't know, maybe I might still munch on some nuts later or something. So let's see how. So I was weighing myself and it's like, oh my god, I lost another 0.1 kg again. So it's like, okay, maybe I really didn't eat enough this afternoon. Uh, this morning before going out to Malaysia. Anyway, so how's your day? Saturday night? Are you guys clubbing maybe? Or you guys went for some nice outdoor location? Go and find some new place to eat or something? You know, spend time with your family, especially it's a week before Mother's Day. Maybe yeah, spend time with your mom or whatever. So hopefully you guys had a great, great Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday, yeah. So it's like still weekend, you know, enjoy your weekend. Work on things, maybe personal hobby. Yeah, I think in Singapore usually people like spend Sundays on with family. I guess you know it's like a family meeting time, friends meet up kind of stuff. But by Sunday night, you know people will be very pragmatic. We'll go home early because Monday morning you have to work. So that's the cycle in Singapore. You know, that's, that's, yeah. Hello, thanks for the likes. Thank you, thank you for the encouragement. Yes, it's hunger and two days. And so far, I have burned three, no, 35,007 calories and traveled 1,098 kilometers. Woohoo! So, I thought that's a lot. To me, it feels a lot, okay? You know, I'm not that fit. So, I get very impressed easily <laughs> of my progress, so to speak. But yes, I know the shuffle truffle, yeah? I still have lots of my, you know, love handle and stuff like that so this is still not getting rid here it's slimmed down a bit I can totally see and feel it a lot of my older clothes I could fit now my friend just came back from Japan so he bought from Uniqlo a 2X the, uh, that's the largest he can find out but if you go Ginza if you guys want big size Uniqlo shirt you know clothes Ginza plus uh, Ginza area in Tokyo is the only Uniqlo that has that big size uh, at least that's what I know maybe they have other locations but uh, at that time when I went to Japan a few years ago they told me that Ginza is the only one uh, and it was there that I bumped into my my previous uh, ex colleague from RP. So it's like, what a small world, right? You go to Japan, it's like, hey, bump your colleague. And then, he, and then he's with his wife, uh, which he wedded quite recently at that time, two, two years ago, I think, two, two plus years ago. So it's like, what a small. And that trip was very weird. That trip when I was in Japan, I bumped into my colleague at Ginza Uniqlo. And then I went to Akihabara and bumped into my army friend. It's like, the whole world came at Sakura season, is it? Like, suddenly you go left and right, you're bumping into your Singaporean friends and, and, and colleagues or something like that. So yeah, that happened. Yeah, so it's like, quite interesting. Oh wait, and one more thing. It's not just Singapore friends. That trip, my Thailand friend went also to Japan and met up with him there. Like, just say, hey, you're also in Japan. They met up and I knew some local Japanese friend who brought us to go and eat local eatery uh, like um, sashimi and stuff like that like only locals go to that kind of pub so he was there to guide us and stuff so that was fantastic and it was like oh my god I'm so 
so much seriously a huge portion of fish and stuff like that a place where like so only locals know to go because it's like really some alley down, down some street that no most tourists wouldn't know so yeah that trip is really bizarre like I, I just coincidentally met three friends friends outside of Japan so yeah the world is that small seriously I'm pretty sure maybe you guys have your own story like you go Europe or US and suddenly you bump your friend right that might have happened as well not surprised in Asia I think it's getting very common because people travel so much in Asia and Asia is not technically as big as say whoa, US or Europe and so you might bump to each friends at specific season at specific location uh, especially those tourist popular location yeah So yes, I know this whole week I've not gone to see my gym uh, strength coach to build like muscles. Okay, so I know I'm delaying that. Not that I'm fearing it, but I really am just not putting my mind to it. Uh. Okay, uh, in a way I think I procrastinated uh, to start building my muscle. Um, oh yeah, talking about the fat. So just now, you know, going through the gantry, right, you have to take off your belt. Okay, they did shout out and say, please take off your belt and stuff. So I took off my belt and I almost forgot that the pants that I was wearing, because of my shrinkage, right, in my size, is like quite loose. It almost dropped. I was like, oh shit. So it was like, after that, I go through, I was like, keep holding on to my pants. In the past, I'm so, you know, my belly is fat enough, I could just bloat out my belly and it holds the pants. But I can't do it anymore. And the pants of a material, so it's a bit heavy and just will just drop. So it was like, oh, so inconvenient. <laughs> I remember when I was fat, it was like, there's other, fat, much fatter. I'm not saying I'm not fat, I'm quite still fat now. But again, it's not body shaming, okay guys? It's not about the size. I'd rather be fat and big, seriously. But unfortunately, the weight directly impacted my spine problem, which had relapsed twice already. So I have no choice. I have no choice. My body's literally telling me, you can't sustain this weight, you can't. And I have like, other markers that shows that, you know, I can going down towards diabetes and hypertension and all these things. Again, because of my family, medical history, it's very likely genetic and so I better do something about my body. It's, it's a way, it's no choice. It's no choice uh. And anyway, I, ah, shit, I can't say it. I was gonna say something about the Avengers with something related to it. Those who watch, I think know what I'm talking about. But I, I thought it might be a bit of a body shaming situation, you know? Like one of the Avengers, the size, yeah, changed and it's like I can't relate with like the fact that he's not such a fantastic character once you get to that size and so your leadership kind of lost it and stuff like that. So they thought, huh, is that body shaming to a certain extent? You know, am I being too sensitive? Is it like being big size equals to depression, big size equals to not successful? You know, so I mean, from a movie perspective, I guess I can see the understanding, you know, from storytelling, but isn't that the same as for the longest time? That's why the Hollywood is so white, you know? Only the lead roles, the heroes, has to be white male, Caucasian white male, you know? Uh, never was before females, which now, in recent years, you know, because of the Me Too and many other feminist movement, which is great, Okay, women are taking out the role of lead role and the heroes and the heroine and saving the day and stuff like that. So fantastic, I really really support that. But there's still some body shaming still, you know? Like, that's the case. You know, celebrity world, Hollywood, fashion world, it's all about... Yeah, literally it is shaming about, oh, big size means ugly. But I did see change, you know? like. There was some time ago, I think Top Model, is it America's Top Model and all this reality TV show, they start introducing people who are more voluptuous, more bigger size. So again, they are trying to reduce, I guess, the body shaming and stuff like that. It's just that, like I said, in the movies, they still go back to the same rhetorical, the same kind of stereotype, you know, and pigeonhole big guys equals to, yeah, looking not so good. Uh, something went wrong with that, so they are big. You know, I'm not saying being big, therefore, equals to definitely healthy, no. But it, does, it doesn't have to be that a movie has to show that being big means... Yeah, no, not being big, sorry, it's the other way. To show that the person is not as heroic anymore, the person is like going through depression, or lost his age, you know, and not the leader anymore, and therefore you have to make him big size to look like that. 
Seriously, I read a bit of the notes lah behind the scene and they're saying that the director decided that because it's the easiest way to portray his character. So I thought, hmm. Okay, I'm saying all this in, in vagueness because I try not to review too much spoilers in case some of you haven't watched. Like, I haven't watched it until today. So my friend been talking like the whole week. So I think I did hurt some things already. So like, oh well. Uh, it's a bit of a spoiler to me already lah. So when I watch it, it's like, okay, yeah, my friend said it's correct. So damn it. But anyway, yeah, you guys are. I think you guys know who I'm talking about. I don't name names, but you've been talking about things around me. It's like, ah, I heard about the Avengers, part of the plot, and part of the change in some of the characters, really. So, like, hmm. Anyway. Okay, lah, okay. I'm just, just joking. Okay, it's not, not a big deal to me, lah. Because, you know, movie come, movie goes. Uh, just enjoy it, lah. You know, just enjoy the movie as it is. You know, even if you heard spoilers, go and watch with an open mind. There are two things that you can learn about and new things to discover as well. Again, I think everyone's interpretation of a movie is different. Like in this case, like I said, am I being too sensitive to say that that change in the character is a bit of a body shaming, you know, because, you know, the, the, the director don't have to use size as a way to relate to being, you know, losing his age, going depression or sadness and not the leader anymore kind of like situation. I hope down the line, just like they have Captain Marvel, you know, and Pepper and all this, like all coming up to be that heroine and strong female characters that can lead and also fight the bad guys and you know still win uh, and stuff like that. So yes, we do need more diversity, <laughs> not just in gender, in size or sexuality or whatever. You know, there's so many things that you can diversify as well. Status, you know. Uh, yeah, many many things. So that movie doesn't have to be your. Hollywood two white situation, the typical Caucasian white male. I mean, sorry, I have friends in US who are Caucasian males. I understand, you know. So okay, I can't say I understand. I'm not a Caucasian white male, but I'm still a male. So I guess I can understand to a certain extent. So there's a certain ego or dignity maybe to some people that's attached to it. So the world has changed. Not that it has changed. The world should have changed from the beginning. But unfortunately, like I say, you know, colonial master. The past, the kind of controversial, uh, controversial, the kind of conservative thinking <laughs> of certain gender, of certain race, or whatever. So yeah, we are, we are living in a world that is already getting very, very diversified and plur pluralized. I think that's the word. Plural, plur plural, pluralized. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say. It. But so basically, it's not just a single silo character. Uh, stereotypical character, yeah, things are, can be much more diverse, and which makes it more fun and more interesting actually. If you think about it, I was about to say something about Captain America, but okay, I cannot because <laughs> it, will, it will be a spoiler. But those who obviously read comics, it's not a spoiler, like, you know, they probably knew about the ending part or something like that. <laughs> I just thought it was nice, you know, a nice change in that sense. <laughs> Let's go, let's go! Ben Briggs again! And Ecto Jimia. Very interesting name. Let's uh, title of this song. Rainy Days! Raining! Is it raining today? No. I don't remember seeing any rain actually. <laughs> oh, I was in the cinema and queuing. Yeah, at the custom. Which is like so long, 3 hours plus. Again, hello, kombawa. Annyeonghaseyo. You know. Oh yeah, Sumi, you know, maybe my Japanese friends going to sleep now or they should have slept because in Japan they should be 1 a.m. I think. Yeah, 1 a.m. 2 a.m. So oh yeah. Oh yeah Sumi. Oh yeah Sumi Nasai. And hope you guys had a great time, you know, weekend. Uh you know, maybe find some new place to do, to have fun, or to spend time obviously with your friends and family. Uh, okay, like I said, you know, share your comments if you can. You know, sometimes share it with me, put it below or something. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys do and stuff like that. Other than just watching me like fat guys, you know, <laughs> I don't know, exercising, trying to lose the weight because of my back problem. Can't sustain it, unfortunately. Yeah, I've been cycling quite slow today. No choice, I'm pretty tired, seriously. I he just came home at like 11 30 and then I start doing the exercise. So, yeah, this afternoon, the queuing drains me and watching the movie of 3 hours yeah no joke man 3 hours long 
<laughs> it's worth it lah, you know, for the ticket price, like watching 3 hours, like, yeah, worth it, it's like, yeah. I mean, in the front, a lot of my friends would say it's very boring. But I thought that, yeah, there's still a lot of details, there's still plot, and still story, so if you listen to it, it's, I think it's fine. I know there's some part I don't quite get it, because I don't really read the comic, or have followed every single Avengers, every single, I would say every single Marvel comic universe franchise movie. Okay, I think Avengers, I did watch every one of them, if I'm wrong. And Guardian of Galaxy as well, so I love that, I love that. So pretty sure Guardian of Galaxy will still continue. I feel like pretty sure. Lah. So yes, I wanna see how that goes. Because there's so many opportunities. You can think Guardian of Galaxy is like Star Trek. It's very interesting, in the movie, they did mention, <laughs> they were mentioning Back to the Future, <laughs> Star Trek, Star Wars, and many, many other things. Even Ted and... Bill and Kek's excellent adventure was also mentioned uh, It's relating to a specific part of the plot Okay, again, I can't say in my spoiler But they did mention all these famous in the past for Hollywood movies And that was hilarious um, He even mentioned the name Lebowski Okay, I didn't really remember watching it in full So there's this movie in the early 80s or was it late 80s or 90s There's this movie called The Big Belo- Le- Lebowski so John Goodman, I remember, is inside it because I quite like John Goodman uh, acting, you know, being a big guy but he acted with so much emotion and, and was quite fun to watch like even when he was Flintstone, Fred Flintstone in Meet the Flintstones right, movie and many others of course uh, He also acted some very serious and psychological um, movies in recent years So John Goodman in uh, The Big Belos- Lebowski, I think So he was referring to I can't say spoiler, but I'll get one of the Avengers and because of his big size uh, Oh, you'll be surprised, you'll be If you ever watch it, you'll be surprised or you ever heard any spoiler, you'll be surprised who is big actually Okay, not the obvious Hulk, it's not I mean Hulk is big, that's obvious, right? But yeah, you, you, if you didn't watch it, you won't, you won't expect it So anyway So, I don't know who, who mentioned it, but he was referring to this big Avengers who became big size and then he was saying like Oh! Oh, that Lebowski. I think most people didn't get that. But I heard it, it's like, oh, Lebowski, okay. That the big Lebowski, you know, because that character is big size. Played by John Goodman, like back in the 80s, 90s, I think. So, yeah, it's a old, old, old movie reference. So, there's a lot of reference for much, I think, going on in the whole movie. So, you got to catch it. Like. I'm pretty sure I, I missed out quite a few others as well. Again, I'm not a comic fan, I'm not a Marvel or DC diehard fan, and I don't read the comic, so. I pretty wouldn't understand a lot of other conversation conversation that I'm talking about. So like Black Widow said certain things in the beginning, it like, like over my head. It's like, yeah, I don't quite understand. Maybe I I can't remember the plot. So she's referring to some things in the past. So it's like, oh okay, maybe that's why she feels the way she feels lah. Uh, Black Widow. Yeah, something dramatic happened to her towards the middle of the movie. Uh, yeah, again spoiler, so I don't say it here. So we're gonna check catch again because there's a lot of unexpected things that happen. Yeah, quite a few unexpected things that happen. Some funny, some really really sad. Uh, but they just gotta do what they do, you know? Got to move the story forward. And so that there'll be new blood or new plot and narrative to come in future franchise of the MCU, you know? Marvel Comic Universe. I mean I'm also excited to watch I think the upcoming ones from um, DC Comic as well. I should have watched Shazam. Has Shazam started showing? Oh dear, I forgot. I think it is, right? So I've watched Shazam. And also Dumbo is watching, showing, right? Uh, because Dumbo is, uh, in this case, directed by the famous, famous... Uh, <laughs> I suddenly. Tim, Tim Burton, Tim Burton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, and I saw that Lion King is coming back again? I saw it in the trailer, it's like, what? Lion King back again? So it's like, okay, but this time Lion King is in like, not cartoon, it's like realistic uh, quite lah, uh, I won't say super realistic, but quite realistic animals and all. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure, oh yeah, they sang, uh, they sang something, oh yeah, Africa something right, oh, no, I forgot, but I'm pretty sure the, the Lion King, Circle of Life and stuff like that, yeah, they'll be probably singing it or, or have it as a music, <laughs> in that, in that, in that real realistic version of the Lion King and it's from the same makers of the Jungle Book so you saw the Jungle Book right I can't, I can't remember watching it but anyway the so Jungle Book when they portray the is it leopard or is it panther I 
think it's not leopard, it's panther, right? Is it? No, it's just jaguar. I think it's a jaguar. Shit! <laughs> I forgot. I think it's a jaguar. And the jungle book. So. <laughs> so anyway, it's very realistic, right? And then the boy inside the jungle book. I mean, the new version, lah, not the old Disney cartoon version, you know? Okay, 15 more minutes. This song is called. It's by Boss Fight. Okay, don't remember adding this, but okay. Boss Fight. The song is Elevation. E-L-E-V-A-T-I-A, Elevation. The Wat Maganeko remix. Oh my god. Very, very creative names nowadays. I think. In my future remixes of my own songs or electronic songs that I've created, I think I must give, come up with some more creative song title. Because my uh, EP album that I released like two years ago, three electronic or electronic ish music, is like orgasmic, fantastic, and uh, chillax, chillaxing. So it's like not very super creative, I know. Oh yeah, this song! I'm not sure will this be a copyright issue, but this by. If I'm wrong, Singaporean, if I'm wrong, I think it's a Malay guy. He's called Sazairi. Sazairi. S E Z A I R I. Sazari. I think he appeared in some National Day song as well. So Sazari. Okay. So Sazari, yeah. Uh, this song, I think it was a few years ago And I quite liked it And in fact, it was through this song that I knew that Oh, this local artist Again, I try to promote as much of Singaporean artists as well That I like as well The Cesare is one of them In particular, this song Called Fire to the Floor It reminds me of the melody Very similar to Michael Jackson uh, The earlier, the, no, the later Michael Jackson music And... Some others, I can't put my fingers to it, but there's some others. Song, can you hear, right? Maybe a bit of Bruno Mars even in the, in the inside. So, yeah, but it's cool, you know. He made it his own. And I think this song is one of those that made to the top, and it was like one of the most played music uh, songs by Cesare. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. <laughs> Correct me if I, <laughs> I, I pronounced it wrongly. Is it Cesare or Cesare? No, but Z can be Z or Z or Z. Yeah, depends how you. Or Z or something like that. I don't know. Fire to the floor. See, that's what. Dun 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 dun. Going to this melody. Which is totally like Michael Jackson. That song. I forgot now. It was a remix of his last song before he died. One of the last songs that he, he the album that he created. Maybe this is a homage to Michael Jackson. I'm pretty sure it is. Cardio workout exercise kind of music. So he can really sing this guy. Seriously. The girl. You hear this part? The girl. The girl. That's very nice. The floor. I want more. The from Seto, high pitch there. Oh, 
sounds like that high. <laughs> I know I'm not a vocalist. It sounds horrible, I'm pretty sure. But it's like, whoa, that high pitch. That part of the song. You know me, Oriana. The song title? Oido, Oido Controller. Korena Remix. Obviously, it's a Japanese. Japanese electronic music. I love, love, love this kind of music genre. Because it's also got a strong beat. Great for, you know, cardio exercise too. Hello. Hi, guys. Thanks for the viewing. And the like, the love. The likes, the love, the comment, encouragement. Hope I in turn encourage you guys to also, you know, keep fit. Alright, exercise, stay healthy, take care of your body, seriously. Yeah. So I think yesterday I was talking about the new, like, what Burger King has done to their packaging, right? To relate to people and literally feeding into their emotion. And that's not joking matter, I'm just saying, yeah, this is like bringing marketing to another deeper level, you know? If once you hit the emotion level, People are very willing to spend money, you know, be it how unhealthy the food is, they will just spend because they can relate. There's a certain emotional connection. And so emotional connection is very strong, a very strong point in, in marketing. So I'm still learning that. Not, hopefully not to do bad, or I would say yes, I won't use it to do bad, but you do need some emotional connection if you want to sell things online or you know, convince people some things online and stuff like that. You know? So if you ask me, am I doing this now? Is this an emotional appeal? Is this my marketing? I would say I'm doing this for myself, okay? Maybe from a selfish perspective, if you see it that way, it's more like for myself because, like I said, I'm putting myself accountable by putting a video online to show that, hey, I need to show myself. That's why, you know, I'm topless. I want to show my change in the body, you know, all these fats. I'm not, I'm not fat shaming, trust me, I'm not. It's just I want to see my progress and change. And the weight is affecting my back spine problem directly. Okay, I have surgery done, two relapses so far. So my body is really telling me cannot, just can't. As much as I would want to be fat and big, my body just can't take it. You know, and it's not like because I got disease already and stuff like that. That's not a reason. You know, sometimes you see friends slimming down very quickly. You might think, oh shit, did he catch some disease? Maybe he got cancer or tumor or what? Like he has to slim down or he's eating some medication or drugs that will cause him to keep slimming down. Not in my case. Okay, in fact, doing this is purely for my own health sake. What triggered me was friend who passed away literally from cancer and heart attack in the few months at New Year, during New Year. That's why after that in January, I started wanting to change myself, you know, because it's, don't do it when it's too late, seriously. Don't do it when you already get the disease, which you could have done to reverse it in the beginning. You know, I already have the markers that shows that I might be getting a disease already. If you, if you just keep going down, this vicious cycle for me, you know, me addicted to food and eating junk food every day, eating fast food, and eating all the unhealthy food, lah, basically, seriously. So, I'm so addicted to it. I go grocery shopping. In the past, I would like automatically just grab a pack of potato chips and put it inside my cart and just buy it. Like, automatically, seriously, like, as in my body and hand, this also associated with my willpower to want to change. It did not work in the past, but until like I said, all these things that happened to me, it clicked, it triggered me, my mind became stronger and determined, and now control my body even more. That my body now became a certain habit that has developed, and I can kick away, so just kick away the bad habits of you know junk food, and I able to cook my own food and learn to bake as well, so I, I can control the kind of food and ingredients inside, you know, so that. I don't overeat and overindulge in things that I shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, once you cook, yes, you can indulge once in a while, you know? You could put maybe certain things that is still considered healthy, you know? Like, let's say you shouldn't eat too much carbs, but you know, from time to time, maybe you eat a bit of pasta, but try to get the healthier version, you know, like brown rice, low GI kind of version. So, yes, from time to time, sometimes there's a bit of pasta inside, there's a bit of vermicelli or bihun inside, or even brown rice. But it's not every day, it's not every day at all. And definitely I did kick off all the usual type of gluten feel or high GI version of those uh, carbohydrates, uh, starchy food. Yeah.
Bell breaks again. I have to gym. Yeah. Quitting time. 5 p.m. Okay. Is it telling people to quit at 5 p.m.? Is that end of job or something? I mean, I mean like end of the job. Job. What, what, what hours? I mean, sorry. But it says quitting time. And then bracket at 5 p.m. What? <laughs> so like, ah, I quit this job at 5 p.m. I don't know. This is the title of the song. Interesting. I wonder what's the story behind this song. This music. Okay, four more minutes and I'm done for tonight. One hour. No, let me say no quitting. Although it's just quitting time. I'm not quitting it. Uh, no matter how late, no matter how tired, you still have to put in the hours. Okay, put in the minutes at least. At least half an hour. Oh, I now remember why I suddenly I forgot. Today I forgot to wear my watch. Why is my watch? Okay, it's behind. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to wear the watch to read my heart rate. You know, again, my heart rate should be 120 130 for at least half an hour. You know, but now I've already done one hour. And most of the time, even running at this tempo, which is about 15 km per hour, I'm pretty sure it's always 120, if I have 30 plus uh, beats per minute. So I'm good. I know I'm good. Uh, but it's good to have it, uh, so you know also you know, how low or high you know, uh, so it changes throughout your exercise. So you know you're not slacking off. Because I know I talk so much, sometimes I really slack off, like, I'm just like, oh, very casually. And then I'll be cycling about 10 km per hour, and then my heart rate might drop to only 100 or something like that. So don't, okay? Keep to it. Alright, 3 more minutes, 3 more minutes. So maybe one more song, I guess. So yeah, and some of my friends are saying, like, wow, you can really cycle for one hour? <laughs> like, I can even cycle for 15 minutes. I think just got to be moderate and try to. Build up the the what's that the intensity and build up the stamina to, to cycle for longer and longer hours. I mean this is nothing like to people who are athletes or fitter, this is like a walk in the park. For me no, I'm not at that level yet, okay? I'm not at that level of fitness. So I'm still trying slowly in my way, you know, to get fitter over time slowly. Okay, one step at a time guys. Most of most of the time I think that's also why I failed also in the past. Is that you want to do so much in such a short time, it's not viable. And you want to see, oh my god, like, am I supposed to like lose 1 kg a day? Like, that's ridiculous. I mean, I got a friend who lose a lot, seriously, 20 30 kg in a year. And end up, again, because of skin condition and stuff, so skin very saggy and stuff, I don't want that. I'm not saying, again, as body shaming, but sometimes maybe it's losing too fast, your, your skin cannot catch up, and it becomes like a hassle. Again, it's not, it's not shaming, it's just that maybe the excess skin is a hassle, like we wear clothes or something, you might get stuck or something if that's it. Who knows, you know, there's many, many other things. I don't know personally because I've not had saggy skin, but yes, there is saggy belly here. So let's see how that goes, you know. Hopefully as I exercise and tone myself, doing maybe some kind of weight lifting or, you know, weight bearing kind of exercise, I might strengthen and hopefully tone out my skin as well. So it doesn't sag or whatever. It also got to do with what you eat. So I do eat a lot of like healthy fats. Um, now people say eat a lot of collagen, right? I don't know. I, I don't feel I eat a lot of collagen. <laughs> seriously, maybe salmon has. I don't. Know, I think when searching, salmon has collagen. I know. I know pets. I'm saying pets. Pigs. Pigs fats and pigs. You know, kind of like gelatin and stuff like that has certain collagen. I did put gelatin in some of my cakes before. So that's from beef skin. Hopefully. The powder form of gelatin has some collagen? I don't know. I need to figure out. So, yeah, collagen apparently will help with your skin condition, you know, suppleness or something like that. So, again, I know sometimes I say things, it may sound like, wait, you're still going back to body shaming, right? Not shaming, but body, the looks, you know? To a certain extent, looks to me, if I feel good, fine. But to others, if it feels ugly, like being fat is ugly, okay, so be it. But I, I like it. I mean, I like to be fat or big size. Uh, or if the collagen makes my skin a certain suppleness and doesn't feel dry or whatever I do have dry feet, seriously Very dry feet, I think athlete's feet as well So it does peel and then it starts getting itchy and stuff So there's a reason why certain skin condition is not good Because it is literally causing problem, you know Like if you've got dry skin or eczema from skin and stuff Then if you can through diet or certain medication to help reverse it Yes, get, get it controlled, you know because I got I got a relative whose eczema is so bad, for a few months he couldn't drive because he affected his whole hand. 
His hair was so dry and flaky, it's painful to even hold the steering wheel. So to that extent, yes, literally skin condition affected his jaw. So that's why, you know, in life there's many things, there's many things that happen. And things that is maybe not obvious. Like in my case called my back problem. It's not obvious to people. You know, people may think you're big and big size for me, okay? Fit wide. But you can carry heavy stuff. No, I can't. So I always tell in the past. Uh, when I joined the, my previous company like five plus years ago, I did tell my boss and my colleague that I can't carry heavy weights. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes I do go and carry because I can't 24-7, I mean like all the time keep asking my colleague. So sometimes short distance I might try. Unfortunately, like I said, that did trigger me. Uh, my relapse last October. I don't blame my colleagues for my frustration, it's just me. My body condition just not there and I still go and try to move certain things. They did help me a lot already, seriously. And I really really grateful for my colleagues and my boss even to help me carry heavy stuff. Uh, knowing that you know I have the back problem. But yeah, it's my it's my choice uh, that I moved it. And so that month it got worse and then for one month, wow, no matter I sit, stand, sleep, the pain keep coming and it's getting worse. So I went to see a doctor, got MRI scan, so I spent thousands of dollars, you see? So that's why I'm trying to do this for myself, because for my health. Because if I don't, I'm very sure another 4 to 5 years, it's going to come back again. Or maybe even earlier. My back problem. So, and as I get fatter and fatter, because 2 years ago, my fatness is about 126 kilogram. If you look at my post, my Facebook post, you'll see the before after, 2007, earlier. 2007, later 2017, sorry, 2017, not 7, 2017, I was so bloated. A lot of my shirt was like, I couldn't wear. <laughs> so filled, filled up into it. Then now when I wear back those same shirts, it's like, oh, pretty, pretty loose. So I'm quite happy that I did string down and stuff. But more importantly, like I said, internal health and you know, building muscles or whatever to bulk up. You know, it's not about the weight. Okay, that's it. Woohoo! I'm done. Yo, Kata! It's uh, midnight. <laughs> 33. So we are done for tonight. One hour, one hour of you know cycling. My exercise is done. So again, thank you guys uh, for all the support. Hope in turn you guys also stay healthy. Okay, stress free. Please eat healthy. Rest well. Sleep enough. Okay, mental health is important as well. Okay, don't keep staring at the screen. It's, it was really detrimental for me. Like I said, a few few last week, a health scare. I get dizziness and vertigo the whole night till morning, cause the whole day I was staring at the screen and stuff. So go out. You know, go to the park. Go to the beach, go hang out with friends, you know, away from looking at the mobile screen for too long. Okay, so, oh, you guess all this, right? <laughs> I draw a little Avenger logo. I know it's missing the arrow here, I think there's an arrow here, right? There's an arrow here. So, anyway, so, I was I'm a fanatic, but yeah, I do love the Avenger series, so, yeah. Go and watch it if you have, if you have not. It's worth watching, I feel, okay? And, okay, that's it. Good night, oyasuminasai, wa'an, selamat malam, annyeonghaseyo. Okay, bye bye, 再见, 笑笑。